Hey guys, Noah here, and today I'm going to show you how I make some barbecue ribs. So these start really simply with a rub. You can use a store-bought rub if you want, but you can make one pretty easily. It's just salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, some cayenne pepper. I'm going pretty heavy on that because I like the heat. Chili powder for color, and this is a little peri-peri spice blend I have. Totally not necessary, but I just wanted to get a little more pepper flavor, and I had it in the cabinet. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to take care of our ribs. So these usually come uh, untrimmed and with a little extra fat on top. So what you want to do is take a paper towel and pull off that membrane on the back, trim off any fat that you have on the surface, and we're going to get these things ready to go with just a little salt and pepper. What this is going to do is just pull out some of the moisture from the meat. We want to have a little bit of moisture on the surface when we apply our rub, otherwise it's not going to stick. So if you don't want to salt and pepper it and let it sit, you know, a faster way to go would be just to use mustard or hot sauce, something like that, to um, get kind of the surface moist, and then you can apply your rub. It's really important that you don't rush these first couple steps because if you don't have your rub adhere properly it's likely to come off during the cooking and no one wants that. So here we go we're gonna go add our rub now and we're gonna apply this fairly liberally but you know we don't want anything more than just a you know kind of a simple clean layer. I think one of the great things about barbecue is that you can really make it your own there's no set rules, and I'm not even following a recipe here. I'm just kind of making this up as I go. This is my third or fourth time making ribs on this grill, and so I kind of feel like I have the fundamentals down, and so I figured I would try out some new things today. You know, I think one of the best resources we all have is YouTube. You know, it's a really easy way to learn how to cook a lot of things in a style you're not familiar with, and so um, I would definitely recommend checking out some other videos um, you know, on barbecue for some people with other kinds of smokers, if that's what you have. But, you know, I think the Kamado Acorn Jr. is a really simple, easy to use kind of first smoker route, especially for the, the size and the convenience with the price and everything. Okay, so here we go. We got our ribs rubbed down, and we're going to let these sit out in the air for, you know, about 20, 30 minutes while our grill is heating up. So that rub has some time to adhere to the surface of the meat. All right, well, it's time to get our grill going. First thing we gotta do is just dump out that ash tray on the bottom and then we're gonna make our fire. It's pretty easy, you just stack up charcoal around a fire starter, light it, give it some time to burn. Today we're gonna be using some oak and some mesquite charcoal with oak wood for smoking. So the first thing you do, you make a little tower of charcoal around your fire starter and you light it. Then you let it sit for 15 or so minutes, 10 minutes, keep an eye on it, make sure the temp doesn't get too crazy. And then we're gonna go in and we're gonna knock down Kind of that tower we made and even out the coals. You know at this point our grill is still getting up to temperature you don't want to rush it. Go ahead close it again shut the grill grates to let it get up closer to the temperature we want. One of the biggest mistakes you can make with this with this uh, smoker unit is trying to compensate one way or the other with the temperature. You know, it's getting too cold, so you open it up too much and then it gets too hot. Or it's getting too hot, so you close it up too much and it dies. You just want to be mindful of the temperature and, you know, not do anything too drastic. So now we're going in with the actual, um, the, the wood that's going to give our smoking the smoke. So we're going in with some oak chips and chunks. The chips are just going to burn a little faster. You can soak them in water if you want, um, like we did, but you definitely don't have to. Just going to give them a little more burn time. So we went in with our indirect ceramic piece, which is going to, um, you know, have the ribs cooked a little more evenly, deflect some of that heat around them, and then with the grill grate. Now we're letting this thing get up to about 250, 275 at the most, but you know, the great thing about smoking is you can be anywhere in the range of, you know, 225 to 275, and you'll be okay. It's just best to keep that temperature kind of in a constant range. You, you want to be cooking pretty evenly. So you guys can see we're getting a ton of smoke pulling off this thing. Our temperature is getting close to where we want it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to throw our ribs on. The first part of this cooking process is just about getting some smoke on the meat. We want to cook it to about an internal temperature of 165 for the first part before we take it off when we wrap it with our foil. One of the big mistakes you could make with ribs is trying to cook them all the way through on the grill itself. You know, you could definitely do that if they're cooking pretty fast, but, you know, the way I'm doing them today at a slightly lower temp, you want to give them that time in the foil later for the fat and the connective tissue to be able to break down. You want to get these up to an internal temperature over 200 degrees, about 202, pretty similar to brisket or something like that, just so we can break down all that fat and stuff in there. 
All right, so our ribs cooked for a couple hours until they were an internal temp of about 165, and we had some nice color on the outside. At this point, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap our ribs in tin foil to finish up the cooking process. It's really simple. You just take a big old chunk of Reynolds wrap, aluminum foil, whatever the fuck you got, and we're going to add some sauce. I'm using some homemade barbecue sauce, but you don't have to be fancy. You can use whatever barbecue sauce you have. This one, if you guys want to find out how to make it, check out my video. I'll throw a link in the description to it. But here we go. We're just going to add a little bit of sauce onto our aluminum foil, and then we're going to flip the ribs topside down and fold them up all nice like a present. And you want to make it easy to fold because uh, we're going to be unfolding this. You don't want to tie it up into a fancy knot or anything. We're going to be unfolding it later to check the temp. So now we're going to just throw it back onto the grill. It's around the same temperature as it was before, and we want to cook it now to an internal temp of about 202 degrees. If you're going to be stacking them like this, make sure you're coming every half an hour or so and rotating them. But this will probably take an hour, hour and a half. Just keep an eye on that temp. So our ribs have reached an internal temp of 202, and we've taken them off the grill again. So we're going to take them out of the foil, and now what we're going to do is we're just going to add a little layer of sauce and rub onto the surface. At this point, they have all the flavor that we want. They are fully cooked. They're tender. We just want to get a little more rub and sauce on the surface to give them that initial bite, that kind of pop and flavor um, to really go well with that smoke. So we're just adding a really thin layer of sauce on the top. I'm using a spoon, but if you have a silicone brush or a spatula or something, I would use that. I'm just using what I had. You just want to be really gentle. You don't want to uh, disrupt any of that nice bark we work so hard to develop, so be really gentle with your spoon. I've seen a lot of different ways to finish ribs. I've seen people use sugar, honey, molasses. They make all sorts of crazy blends of sauces, but a really easy way to do it would just be to take some um, some barbecue sauce from the store, you know, mix it with a little vinegar to thin it out, and put that on top. So as you guys can see, after I put the sauce down, I went and added a, another layer of rub. This is called a muddy rib, something that they do pretty traditionally in other parts of, or I guess parts of the South, and it just gives the ribs a really nice finish. It's going to add a little more flavor and kind of add some continuity as far as the flavor of the ribs go because that was, you know, one of the first layers we added. So as you guys can see, these are just looking great. The surface is super moist. They don't look dried out or anything. This is what we're going for. Honestly, the hardest thing about making barbecue is not diving in, taking a bite before it's ready. So just like the first rack, we're going in with the seasoning again, the rub. feel like a lot of ribs are just too sweet honestly um you know they're relying a little too much on the sugar and the molasses and the honey to really pull the flavors out but I wanted to go for kind of a little more of a spicy rib today and I think we definitely accomplished that so what we do is we fold the foil that we wrapped it in earlier down into like a little boat so just kind of wrap the edges up um in because we're going to put these back on the grill for a little while just for that sauce and seasoning to adhere flip these guys over Taking the last of our sauce, covering the top. And we've left our grill on this whole time, you know, just leaving the, the vents a little ways open, keeping the heat going, because we're just going to finish these off for another 20, 30 minutes. If this is your first time making ribs, you know, definitely try to take note of what's going on. You know, how long you've been cooking it for? What temperature it's been cooking at? What seasonings you've been using? What kind of sauce you used? Those are the things that are going to affect the outcome, and it's good to be mindful of them because if it comes out bad or it comes out good, you can repeat the process or not repeat the process. All right, so we put them on the grill. We let them go for another 15, 20 minutes. And our ribs are now looking great. The sauce is adhered with the seasoning, and these things are ready to eat. So we're just going to come in and lift them off real quick. I was making these ribs today with my buddy Lee. It was a great time. Um, smoking, cooking in general is just a great activity with your friends. Um, and it gives you some nice time to hang out because, you know, these ribs have to smoke for 
uh, many hours. So closing our grill down, and we're going to take them inside to slice them up. So as I actually forgot to film the first part, but as you guys can see, these are looking great. Got a little too much color on some of these little ones, but it doesn't matter. It's going to be okay. We're not making these for competition. We're just eating these. Make sure when you cut them, you flip them over. It's going to be a lot easier to see those bones, and you're not going to screw your ribs up. Last time I made ribs, I cut them from the top side and had some issues. All right, guys. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, give it a like if you liked it, and I'll see you guys later.